Greetings and welcome to another LGR unboxing things you sent video. I haven't done one of these in, oh man, almost half a year, I guess. The last one I did was in April, so these things have been piling up. It's been a very busy summer, but thanks in advance to everyone who's been sending things and just honestly helping this uh, summer of LGR to be really awesome, even without the donations. But this video is about the donations, so let's get to unboxing this awesome stuff you folks have generously sent. All righty, first up, got one here from Pontus in Sweden. Well, apparently this required quite the explanation. Yeah, he's just describing how the game works. Uh, it's a game from Sweden called Mall Maniacs. It sounded interesting. Well, this will definitely require more research, but I was intrigued enough to be interested for sure. Is that Comic Sans on the CD? I think it is. <laughs> well, this is just a weird thing. Thank you very much. Okay, next up I got one here from Doug. As promised, he sent me one of the first SNES 2 GP boards. So yeah, this converts Super Nintendo controllers over to the 15-pin game port on PC. So you can use it with DOS games. User manuals, pretty straightforward. <laughs> got a third-party controller here, but of course it'll work with any. So there you go, that's the board itself. You just got the Super Nintendo side here, 15 pin game port there. And yeah, it allows you to plug in Super Nintendo controllers on your PC, which is nice because I've seen plenty of other adapters and stuff, of course, for USB. But even back in the day, if you wanted a console controller on your PC, you pretty much had to stick with serial or even parallel. I remember seeing some adapters like that, but never one to go to the game port, oddly enough. So this is very cool. Thanks for sending it my way. I've got one here in an envelope from Kevin in Germany. Check that out. New old stock Microsoft Windows 98 stickers. Originals. Very cool. I will have fun with them. Thank you very much. All right, got one here from Blurry. There it is. From Justin. Uh, it, I guess it's late. I don't know. I'm late opening these. <laughs> okay, no note or anything. I don't think. Uh, got something called the Internet Experience. Navigating the Internet and World Wide Web. I very much enjoy these kinds of CDs from back then, so thanks for sending this. I don't even know what to expect, but it looks intriguing. All right, got yeah, one here from Nathan. So yeah, he sent me this t-shirt design after I did my Tempest little mini arcade video. I believe he designs these and sells them and such. Like here's some stickers of a couple Fallout ones. You're over encumbered and cannot run. <laughs> Some Galaga stuff. Apparently he's been binging since he discovered the channel about a year ago. Oh man, that's a long time to binge. I hope you're okay. Glad you're enjoying and thank you very much for sending the stuff. Ghost Nebula Illustrations is his thing. Thank you, Nathan. All right, got one here from Gerald. Oh yeah, sent a few different things here. Some of which I already have, but this is the main one I was interested in. Uh, yeah, the SimCity official soundtrack uh, SimCity 3000 that is one of my absolute favorite soundtracks and not an easy soundtrack to get a hold of physically so thank you very much sir uh, very cool game soundtracks got one here from Aaron found this while cleaning and realized it never sent it <laughs> Merry Christmas I guess yeah sure I'll take it <laughs> Merry Christmas to you too oh yeah this is a weird Little thing. This is the Jazz Pianist a Piano Music Library for your MIDI system or PC sound card. I, you know, I'm obviously a fan of jazz as a musical genre and also a fan of MIDI. And this just appears to be a bunch of MIDI files, but also has support for Roland, General MIDI, Sound Canvas, all this good stuff. So I don't know. Thank you very much. All right. Got one here from the UK that got a bit beat up <laughs> in postage. In fact, it looks like. Uh, who knows what came out of there because oh yeah it's from gareth uh thank you gareth <laughs> looks like there were some food things in here those all melted together <laughs> well i appreciate the thought mm, bethesda game as discussed here's a copy of delta 5 definitely will be able to do more thrifting episodes but as always that is something that uh you know it just takes time but yeah, not familiar with this game from Bethesda back then at all, but it looks really cool. I don't know. Interesting 3D, early 3D graphics and cool colors and stuff. Apparently it's a flight sim. VR. VR flight sim. Uh, it's, I don't think it actually supports VR headsets. But anyway, thank you for this. All right, I got one here from Nate. 
to me. Enjoy my sound card. I will, Mr. Nate Random Guy on the Internet. I always enjoy sound cards, and oh man, I will enjoy this one. It's an absolute classic of a sound card, a Sound Blaster CT1350B. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite sound cards, especially when you get, get the other chips and populate those in there, so you have like creative music system support. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much, Nate. I will definitely be using this in future builds. Okay, I got this one here from Easy Post. <laughs> I'm assuming this is some sort of business drop shipment or something. Okay, yeah, this is from the company, I guess, that handles 3D Realms merch. Yeah, I got an official Build Engine t-shirt. A big fan of the Ken Silverman Build Engine used for Duke 3D and Blood and a whole bunch of other classics from back in the day. And uh, yeah, I guess they started selling these sometime early summer this year. And I just reached out on Twitter and like, yeah, do you want one? I'm like, yeah, sure. I will take a cool t-shirt for the, one of my favorite engines. So thank you very much. Got one here from Jeff. <laughs> That's it, that little tiny thing. This is interesting. This is a copy of Exodus Journey to the Promised Land for the Game Boy. Yeah, one of those weird little unlicensed things that Wisdom Tree did back in the day. I'm a big fan of these, not because they're great games, but I just, I don't know, weird religious things and unlicensed games. Uh, but thank you very much, Jeff. Seriously though, just look at the way this, this cartridge is designed. That weird wavy sticker that is molded to the weird wavy shape of the whole thing. It's just odd, man. I don't have any... <laughs> unlicensed Game Boy games. I do now. Alrighty, you got one here from the UPS store in Tennessee, which <laughs> I don't know. We'll see if there's a note inside. That's from Holden. It's, as a 20 year old, he obviously missed out on a lot of tech from back in the day, so it's been great to see all that stuff. Awesome. Glad to hear you. you've been enjoying the older things. Oh yeah, so uh, the Avon Beauty Vision computer I covered a while back, it, it did some tests and things on there about Cologne, apparently contacted an Avon salesperson. A couple of them were still made. Night Magic, Soft Musk, and Imari are still in production. <laughs> this is a thing. All right, so, so this is Night Magic. Yeah, I do remember this one being mentioned on that computer in this very room. Oh my, oh my. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> Yeah, it shouldn't have gone in my nose. Okay, I can smell it a little better. Well, that's a very, it's very sweet. Very sweet smell. Okay, let's try Imari. Where passion blooms, experience the power of Imari with notes of sparkling citrus, opulent jasmine, and addictive vanilla for a long lasting sensuality. Yeah, see, that sounds more. Uh -huh. Oh, look at that. That's a thing. I wish I had one of those little thingies that you spray on the paper or whatever. I guess I could just kind of spray it on here. Okay, and I, I do like this one better. I don't know. I, you know, actually, I don't mind that at all. That's not bad. I'm not sure I'd, I'd wear it, but I do like the way that smells. Definitely get some of that opulent jasmine and addictive vanilla. More the vanilla. I like the vanilla. Um, anyway, thanks for this odd donation and sort of follow-up to the Avon Beauty Vision. <laughs> what little of that computer that there was uh, meant for men. So thank you. This is this is weird, but cool. Kind of an interesting little collectible to go along with that computer now. All right, this feels like more t-shirts or something. This is from Vivid Vaporwave. Vaporware? Vaporwave, yes. Yeah, this is, I think this is coming from the same supplier as the 3D Realms shirt. It's the same exact paperwork. Both the shirts came from the same place. Anyway. That's an odd coincidence, but uh, check this out. That is a Cool Crab t-shirt, folks. A very vapor wavy looking Cool Crab with the purple and the greenish teal going on. That is sweet. I think they all have the same design, but this one may be a hoodie. Definitely all smell like vinegar. Uh, this one's like a dark blue. No, it's, that's black. Yeah. Dude. Uh... <laughs> There's a bunch of people actually that have contacted me about doing Cool Crab merch and I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to sell it myself because I don't know what the, I don't know, I, just, I don't really have time to do it. But there's a bunch of people that have started making these things. In fact, if you go on Redbubble, I'm sure you'll find a number of them. Uh, this is one of them. So, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, the fact that Cool Crab is like turned into a thing at all just, uh, it amuses me. Okay, I want to hear that's rather heavy, but somewhat thin. So I don't know what's in here. This is from, doesn't, it does not say. 
Ah, it's from Scott. Here are the flaptical drives we talked about. Sweet. He's told they were both working, but he noticed a bad label on one of them. All right, well, thank you very much in advance because I've been looking for some of these. Well, this is not, was not expecting this one. Um, but yeah, these other ones here. Yeah, that's right. It's a format called Floptical. Was absolutely a thing. It's got like a sort of a reddish colored disc inside. And yeah, you run these on Floptical drives. Uh, this one's by Insight. In fact, these are both by Insight here. This one has a... <laughs> oh, that's cool. Uh, one of those little shipping protectors. It can be hard to find these at all, much less some that work, but uh, hopefully they do. I've been wanting to cover this for a long time. I'd still really like to get some of the other things that went along with this in terms of like documentation, packaging. If anybody has any floptical stuff that they'd be willing to part with so I can make an oddware video, I'd very much appreciate it. I don't know exactly what this one is. Oh, this doesn't look like floptical. It looks like just floppy with a like memory card readers. <laughs> That's kind of odd in and of itself. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for sending these my way. Even if they don't work, it's just cool to finally see some in person. All right, got one here from Joshua. Ah, NASA Museum. Explore the first virtual reality. Here we go with that virtual reality again. It's just early 90s virtual reality in that sense that it's like, it's a recreation of a real place virtually, not like headset stuff. I mean, sometimes some of these things would have that, but this looks like it's just like a macromedia director type of thing. Either way, very cool. I love space related collectibles and especially for PC and whatnot. I don't know, this is just my kind of thing. So thank you very much. Got one here from Ashwin. Oh yeah, man. Been looking for one of these. So this is a this is a thing. This is the Logitech Audio Man compact digital audio tool. So check this out. It's a actual sound card of sorts, but it's one that attaches to the parallel port, making it kind of similar to the Kovac speech thing or Disney Sound Source in a way, but also different. Because I, I you know it's just something I've wanted to cover for a long time because I don't know a whole lot about exactly how it works. So thank you for sending this in the box. That is very cool. All right, got one here from Jim. And I don't see any notes in here, but anyway, two excellent condition PC game boxes. So I've got a classic Maxis game, Robo Sport. Well, classic in the, it's classic to me, is a much better condition box than I had. So I was happy to have this because it looks great. And Spaceward Ho, which I have never played at all, but man, that box art is truly the best. There's a rocket-powered space shark and a cowboy, and there's like flaming Cheetos. Lassoing a planet, dude. Looks amazing. It maybe isn't that amazing, but who knows? I have never tried it. Thank you for sending these. Got one here from David in Portugal. <laughs> I see the one packing peanut. Uh, you know, I don't think that joke will ever stop. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, David Deckard Games, David, yes. So, yeah, this is the add-on we've talked about, and yeah, oh, oh, I know what this is now. That's cool stationery, by the way. I, I dig that Windows 3.1 notepad. Oh yeah. Now this is an absolute rarity. We all need extra speed, extra tracks for the need for speed for DOS. 100% unofficial add-on. Dude, 500 plus new tracks? Like, what? What even are these? Tracks, cheats, patches, utilities. It's weird enough to even hear about modding for NFS1. I mean, it was certainly doable. I showed a little tiny bit of it in my Need for Speed 1 review a while back, but the fact that there's a whole physical release of these things, this is probably gonna get a dedicated video because I, I am so confused. 1997 by UK Gold. Anyway, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Deckard Games, David. This is super cool. I think he found a couple of them, like just very luckily, and decided to send me one of them. So much appreciated. This is gonna go perfectly in my collection over there. Got one here from Austria, from Dieter. Or maybe goes by DD. A <laughs> very nice selection of wood grain. Print it out for my amusement. Yeah, unfoldable disk storage. Yes, indeed. Uh, thank you, DD. Let's see if I can make it work. <laughs> now that is an intriguing floppy disk holder, I gotta say. Look at that, that is satisfying. 
Yep. That's all that is. Thank you so much. This is super cool. <laughs> okay, I got one here from Veronica. So this is a thing. I like these kind of things. Action Arcade Adventure Set, a three and a half inch disc. It's a game creation book for PC. <laughs> you're a cool dude, enjoy the book. Uh, well, you're a cool Veronica, thank you for the book. And uh, I am, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this other than, I don't know, try to make a game or something. <laughs> I've always been cautious about doing a video on these types of things, but I highly enjoy them just on my own personal time, if nothing else. So yeah, much appreciated. Okay, got one here from Zach. All right, he loves the show. He's pumped he can add it to my collection. Well, thank you. It's tucked away in his closet, not being appreciated. Well, now it'll be tucked away in here, being hopefully appreciated. A uh, big fan of LGR Foods. Indeed, I am hungry. Oh, hey, yep, yep. Been looking for this for a while. This is Star Trek Deep Space Nine Harbinger. Comes in this rather interesting plastic box. Yeah, I've never played the game. Don't know if it's any good. I mostly have been after it for this oddly shaped package. So got a whole bunch of Star Trek games is going to go down there with those and looking awesome. That just, that just looks neat. Man, creative 90s packaging, right? Okay, got one here from Jeffrey at Star Micronics. Yeah, that's Star, the printer company. So yeah, after I did the video on the Star Dot Matrix printer, they of course are still around and they got in touch and offered to send some Star things. It's a nice mug. Always leading, always innovating Star. Yeah, I just like the fact that they keep their old logo intact. I mean, that is a classic 80s looking logo. What is this? Okay, so we got a little translucent star thing. <laughs> that is a, a thing you hand out at trade shows. Got a nice lanyard there. A business card, a bunch of star stickers. Yeah, man, like a bottle opener. Oh, dude, thank you for embracing Star's retro tech. We hope it's okay. Or thank you is a thermal print instead. Yeah, sure, that's fine. Ta -da. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, it's star merch. Ooh, that's nice. Uh, so thank you folks at Star. Um, I just really like your logo. <laughs> okay, I got one here from somebody in Texas. Okay, so I do know what this is, but I don't recall off the top of my head who sent it. Maybe there's a note in here. If not, I'll put it at the bottom of the screen. Here's the receipt. Uh, yeah, they, so they found this at an Austin, Texas antique mall. This is an IBM dictation machine. The IBM Executary 224 dictating unit. I have been after one of these for a little while now, just because, you know, old IBM tech and... Uh, you know, watching enough tech moan, whoops, you start getting into dictation machines for some reason. So there's the battery compartment. That just fell right out of there. Look at this. This, this, I don't know. There's been uh, this kind of an IBM design language going on for so long throughout the 20th century. And it was going on back then too. I think this is a mid 60s device, if I recall. Uh, but yeah, I just think it looks wonderful. And this was in great condition. He found it for 20 bucks. So uh, thank you for this. Oh man. Yeah, look at that. Nice that it came with the manual, because totally foreign technology here, man. 60s tech, electronical things, that, that, is, that is well beyond what I usually dive into. But uh, yeah, I'm interested in looking further into it. So anyway, thank you very much to you who sent it. I'll put it right here because <laughs> didn't have your name on a box. Thank you very much for this. This is just neat. All right, getting a little larger now. Got one here from... Sean. Oh my. That's a lot of blue. If I recall, these belonged uh, to his father that recently passed away. It's just a whole bunch of Atari Soft IBM PC games from the early 80s. I mean, these are some of the, you know, early licensed games for the platform and uh, don't have any actual screenshots or anything on the back, but I use these things all the time for you know, like testing out compatibility and things like that for different PCs and XT systems that I have, especially Defender here is highly reliant on your computer's CPU speed. And these are just in great shape, better than I've ever seen, honestly. I mean, these are hard enough to find anyway. So uh, thank you very much for sending these my way. Uh, this, is, this is very cool. Obviously a well cared for collection of PC games. Okay, got one here from Ben in the Netherlands. 
All right, got a nice note here from Ben. Uh, let's see, sorry for the delay. Eh, no worries. So much interest for the ZX Spectrum hardware that I'm really struggling to keep up. Oh man, yeah, so he's got this uh, company, Byte Delight, putting together these ZX Spectrum packages. Thank you very much for sending this. Um, I hope it's not too much of a burden to have done so. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, check that out. This is uh, Spectrum 128, the Toast Rack version, as it is known, and a very uh, lovely red box here. And there's also, it's like a dust cover included as well from uh, the biggest Toast Rack hoarder in Holland, Rene, who had these dust covers made. That's awesome. So yeah, I had a 48K a long time ago, but that's the only experience I've ever had with a Spectrum. This, on the other hand, oh, that looks awesome. Well, heavier than I expected, too. That's very, very cool. Refurbished by Byte Delight. So yeah, it's been all taken care of. The internals have been refreshed and, you know, stuff has been swapped out, so it's working and it's got all the original stuff with it, but also like, you know, new cables, new power supply, new, oh, I don't even know what else. There's so much good stuff in here. There's a SCART connection at the uh, cassette over there. We got the ZX AY three channel audio interface. Lots of good stuff in here. So yeah, very much appreciated Ben and co. This is super neat. Thank you so much. Okay, I got one here from Jeffrey in Australia. Apparently Al Jarrah has helped keep him company recently as he was often on night shift duty to help watch the baby. Yeah. Oh man, wishing you the best with that. Yeah, shout out to wife Gracie and baby daughter Annabelle too. And yeah, there's some cool things that are included in here. So let us check them out. We are off to a good start already. All right, so these two are definitely a couple of the stars of the show here. It's got some registered Apogee shareware games. These are the full versions, all three parts are two parts in this case for goodbye galaxy uh, but yeah this is uh oh wow what is this it's just like it's kind of a generic box with some i don't know things plastered onto it but anyway manicom they uh, distributed a bunch of the registered versions of apogee games in australia and uh, but after a couple of these for actually any of them for a long time and here are two of them so that's very cool got a discount version of secret of monkey island that's interesting packaging from Sega Aussie Soft, really. Got some Sierra Kids things, uh, Lost Secret of the Rainforest, Island of Dr. Brain, didn't have that, and Castle of Dr. Brain, which I have since covered. <laughs> There's something that's interesting. Microsoft Game Shop includes Qbox, a customizable version of Tetris. Again, with the game creation stuff. I don't know what I'm going to do with these, but I do want to do something. So if anybody has any ideas, I don't know, uh, let me know. Because there's so many of these cool packs from back in the day. It just seemed like it'd be interesting to cover and in some form. Even if I'm not making my own games, just kind of showing them how they work. And then, uh, yes, this I've been wanting for forever. Need for Speed High Stakes, the Australian edition with the Holden and Ford cars included. Yeah, dude. Uh, the downloaded, I remember downloading those back in the day of like nfscars.net or something. And... Uh, you know, you could add them to the American version, but to have the original Australian releases, very cool. As a collector, need for speed things. So yes, thank you very much for all the goodness and best of luck with the baby. Okay, I got another one here from an unknown sender. Okay, we got a note here from David, it looks like. Uh, yeah, very long time subscriber, 2012. <laughs> his dad really likes tech tales and his brother and him like pretty much every video on the channel. Well, thank you very much. So yeah, there's a wood grain thing from the 80s in here. Let us check it out. Oh yeah, dude, classic swing line stapler with the wood grain. Yeah, you know, I'll take it, man. That's an awesome stapler. Definitely a way better than the one I have. So uh, thank you very much. Hope you all continue to enjoy the videos. Okay, got another package from a David. Sure are a lot of Davids in the tech community, huh? I guess there's just a lot of Davids. A copy here of GeoWorks Ensemble, graphical environment and productivity applications. That is something I've always wanted to check out. Very cool. That's quite a beefy package too. I think it's heavy. And a note there as well. Tech Tales of the History of Geos. That's definitely 
a possible thing. Uh, and apparently also he's doing a project here. Tribute to his late uncle Tom Rizzo and features his music as a soundtrack and his likeness as the main character. Well, that's cool. Oh, and I do remember that floppy uh, demo, the Conway's Game of Life short film thing. Thanks once again for sending some stuff my way and wishing you the best on the Rizzo Island project. The Dreamcast compatible website is a nice touch. Got one here from Bradley. It's well packaged, whatever it is. <laughs> okay. If I could stop laughing, I'll... <laughs> so this, is, uh, <laughs> this is obviously a disc uh, holder, five and quarter inch floppies, with one of those nice retracting wooden tops. I have one like this, but it was mostly just plastic. It was made to look like wood, but it's actually got some wooden components. So that's very cool. Now this. <laughs> oh my word. The one peanut. I'm telling you, the packing peanut joke. This is a 3D printed like sculpture of a packing peanut with a little plaque. This is, this is. <laughs> this is the dumbest thing. That is some effort right there. And you pick the right kind of awful packing peanut too. Like some of the packing peanuts I don't mind as much. These are the worst ones right here. <laughs> I don't even know what to say, except y'all are nuts. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, my word. That is so silly. Okay, I got one here from Scott Mackey. We'll see if there's a peanut in this one. That's why my legacy is going to be like wood grain and packing peanuts. It's not what I expected as a kid, but okay. Okay, yeah, yeah here we go. It's a ConcoVision game that I did not have. This is The Prophecy. Uh, yeah, I mean, about it. I, I wanted it because ConcoVision. So, uh, awesome. There's a note in here too, right? Indeed there is. I get a message from Scott. We had a good 4th of July and happy awesome 10 years. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I guess this was from back in July. It's one of the first DOS computer games he played. I'm not sure if I have it or not. I don't. Uh, so yeah, similar to Shadowgate. Interesting. Yeah, I guess it looks a little shadow gatey, maybe. Uh, yeah, anyway, never played it. Intrigued to do so. Thank you, Scott. There you go, one here from Zach. Oh, yeah, there we go. Absolute classic. I somehow didn't own Gizmos and Gadgets and Super Solvers game. That was a lot of fun, actually, if I remember. Haven't really played it since I was a kid. Very cool. A little faded on the spine there, but that's yeah, all right. Thank you, Zach. Yeah, I already got one here from Texas, and I don't know who it's from. All right, so yeah, these are a couple items from the warehouse, actually, at Computer Reset. This is from Chris, um, who also happens to, uh, I guess, work for One Up on Cancer. Yeah, they're a nonprofit. They help with, like, uh, cancer treatment bills and paying those off and ex extremely expensive stuff here. So awesome nonprofit, and uh, yeah, anyway... Yeah, just yeah, thank you, Chris, for sending these things along, and also some uh, yeah, a whole bunch of things. Look at that. One up on cancer. I do a whole bunch of like gaming fundraisers. I think on Twitch and and uh, just all sorts of different things. Uh, check them out. And uh, yeah, thanks for the goodies. And I got so many T-shirts this time. <laughs> so many T-shirts. Yeah, a couple of these, which I was not. I mean, I just totally didn't see them. I guess they were over in the warehouse somewhere, but the warehouse is gigantic. So. David Ledbetter's Greens Instructional 3D Golf Simulation. Uh, it's apparently some weird MicroProse upgrade version of this. I've, I'd never seen it before. So, uh, and then of course we got another GeoWorks thing. GeoWorks desktop here, a bit of an older uh, thing. It's just the desktop version. It's not the whole ensemble software suite. So this will definitely go along. Actually, there's the, you can see the rest of it in that little picture there, but yeah. Definitely got to do something with GeoWorks and Geos, GeoS. These things fascinate me. And once again, thank you for sending them my way, Chris. And a bit of a long one here from Pat in New York. Well, this is a thing. The Innovate at eight to keyboard. Key, oh man, these at signs. 
keyboarding for dummies. Advanced speech recognition system designed to enhance productivity. Uh, it's an IBM Via Voice thing, but uh, it's like a whole keyboard setup. So yeah, you got a keyboard, but it's got like microphone and headphone inputs and stuff. Man, I don't know. This is, this is a weird way of doing this. There were a whole ton of Via Voice things. I've wanted to cover Via Voice in some fashion because I actually did use a version of it at one point, but uh, nothing like this. So this is weird and uh, amusing. Thank you very much. Got another one here from an unknown sender in New York. Space filler, disregard. This filler from space, how can I disregard that? It's the new AG Biofeedback software recently emailed me about. Yes, if anything, I hope I can give it a proper shakedown. Thank you, Ty and Tav, T-A-V, Ty and Tav. Mm -hmm. Yep, my kind of weirdness. The journey to wild divine, the passage. A meditation adventure for mind and body. You know, I've seen a few different meditation thingies for computers over the years, but this one with its finger sensors and like mist-like environment definitely had uh, my attention. Biofeedback, let's, you know, who knows? We'll see. I gotta try this out at some point. This one's pretty heavy. That's from Jacob. Lots and lots of inserts and manuals to like random, random things. Now uh, here we go. Here's what uh, actually gave the okay to send. <laughs> so yeah, check this out. Got quite the um, bunch of PC gamer magazines from the 90s. Yeah, dude, absolutely love these. Some other ones in here too. PC games magazine, computer gaming world magazine. It's mostly the PC gamer ones that I was really interested in. Look, that's one from 1996 and 97, April, January, uh, these are just great, mostly because they also came with the CD-ROMs, and I have most of this, well, not most of them. I have a lot of the CDs, but uh, yeah, oh man, instantly, just look at this. Look at that. Whoa, two-page ad for Pod. I actually have a version of this that I had um, printed out, like blown up in poster form, but if anything, like the ads are, oh, Simcopter ad. Ah, yeah, dude. Living with Win95, Dan Bennett. See, that's the kind of person I trust to tell me about Windows 95. In fact, I think I've cosplayed as him. <laughs> Look at that. We got like the same glasses, man. Picked those up at a thrift store. Anyway, uh, thank you for these. Definitely gonna be using them at some point in the future when I cover like PC Gamer demo discs. And I'm not as familiar with these other magazines, so I will uh, have fun reading them and such. Thank you. All right, another one here from, from Mike. Okay, as promised, here's the games, and he took the liberty to throw in some junk. Well, you know, let's see, we got some IBM-related stuff. Micro-channel graphics card, an ATI chip on there. IBM S390 video manual. Got a small box copy of Schism. And a nice box copy there of Dragon's Lair 2 Time Warp for Windows 95. Neat. Uh, yeah, here's one I've been wanting for a while. is a Tristan Solid State Pinball. <laughs> it's got a pinball inside. There's a couple pinball games for PC that I've come across that do that. This used to be quite the respected pinball game, if I recall. At least among a certain number of folks in the... PC pinball community for a point in time. Got this copy of Corporation. That is some box art right there. And got a very nice condition box for Car and Driver here. Something I covered a while back, but uh, yeah, this is a better condition box than the one I had, I believe. If anything, it looked like it came with maybe a little bit, whoops, a little bit more stuff and like these lovely looking discs. I don't know, just couldn't say no when he offered it. <laughs> I love this game. And I got a copy of Overlord here, Virgin Mastertronic release. That's some neat looking art. Ah, yes, here we go. Check this out. Mr. Sound Effects. <laughs> Collection of weird and wacky sounds that'll blow you away. Not for sale. Hmm. Property of Egghead Software. I wonder how this happened. 
Michael Winslow being weird and awesome, uh, I assume. It's just like sound effects and a collection for Windows. Like, I guess you could just like use his noises for your Windows sounds. Well, here we go. Here's one I didn't have. Got Jet Fighter 2 here, as well as the Advanced Mission Disc over here. It's nice looking funky box and some more flight stuff. A wonderful condition copy here of Mantis XF5700 Experimental Fighter. And this is the one I was more interested in with these two here. This is the Experimental Speech Pack. It's just the Speech Pack. So, uh, awesome. <laughs> Didn't have this at all. So, thank you for all these things. Some great condition stuff here. Alrighty. And this interesting looking box from Belgium. I believe it's from Steve. Wow, what is this? Blocking 3. It appears to be a quiz show on TV that combines video games and uh, trivia. Somebody from the area will have to enlighten me on that one. That's a first. <laughs> Never heard of this. But this is what he was uh, said he was going to send. Check this out. This is an old uh, Rico digital camera. Yeah, the same one that is making like interesting 360 cams and other things today, but RDCI 700 image capturing device and also an internet communicator, like personal digital assistant almost. It's like a weird mix of things. I had never heard of it before. What a weird design. It takes compact flash card and PCM CIA. All sorts of it's just weird. This is just so weird. I really hope it works. How do I open this? Just lift it up. Oh, yeah. So look at that. This is uh, delightful. It rotates around, too. This is just nuts. So, uh, it's got a stylus. <laughs> so strange. I love it. Again, hope it works. But could be weird. It's got some weird batteries and all sorts of funky components that could go wrong. Either way, thanks so much for sending this my way. I... Done. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, one final one here from Akbukuku, who, uh, yeah, YouTuber. Awesome fella. Anyone care to guess what kind of contents are in here? Because uh, I gotta say, dude, you went all out with this packaging. So this is, this is the kind of YouTuber he is. This was on top. It appears there may have been a switch at, at some point. Anyway, here's what's in the box. Look at all these. So it's like an odd collection of Barbie things. Many of them in other languages. Yeah, man, I now have one of the most bizarre collections of Barbie games on the planet, I believe, all in one fell swoop. <laughs> like, where, the, what, there's, okay, maybe the, uh, the note will have a little more information. So, he stumbled uh, onto these Barbie games at a local store. There was so much going on with them. Two dollars, all sealed, almost every single one of them in a different language. Picked them up and let me know about them. Said, the story doesn't quite end there. Once you add up to the register, there was... Found out something you never knew about the store. Once a day, a random customer gets their purchase for free. And today was his lucky day. Okay, so he got all these for free. <laughs> the Japanese one is labeled sample, so I wonder if all these language versions were ever released. That's a good point. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much, Shelby. And uh, that's quite the unique note. In fact, I'm sure this would be a unique thing, too, if it worked. I found the switch. Looks like it just sort of came apart uh, in transit or something. And the hot glue didn't hold up. Uh, but anyway... There's the sample sticker he was telling me about UPC being covered up there. And like I said, it's just an unusually tall box. Like this right here is a typical big box size. Like I know it's got some stationery and stuff in there, but still it's gigantic. Yeah, that is the question. Were these released? Odd collection. Thank you very much for sending these my way.
All right, and that is another unboxing of donations video done. And this actually might be the last one this year because, uh, yeah, like I said earlier, it's, it's the first time I've done one of these videos since last April. You know, I don't take in many things. I was like, maybe I say uh, okay to one or two donations every week at most, but you know, over half a year, it does kind of pile up. So uh, it'll probably be sometime in 2020 before I do another one of these. But anyway, thank you to everyone once again for just sending things in or offering to send things in and supporting the channel in any number of other ways. 2019 has been a fantastic year so far. I don't know, there's awesome things coming up. I mean, I'm just about to head up to the Chicago area and do a convention of sorts. I mean, I'm not making like an official appearance. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just going there. Uh, Vintage Computer Festival Midwest. So if you see me there, say hi. And if not, you know, I guess this is in the past at this point, so it doesn't matter. But thanks once again for supporting the show and sending all the cool stuff and just being generally excellent people. <laughs> see y'all in the next one with uh, some more traditional LGR things in the coming weeks.